Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the game where you can fuse any two Pokemon without any restrictions. There are a lot of different combinations of fusions in this game, and this makes it so that every single playthrough is a unique experience. I have a love-hate relationship with this game since the last two Nuzlocke's I did ended in utter failure. I don't want to talk about it. So today, instead of doing a Nuzlocke, we're going to be focusing on the main attraction of this game, the actual fusions and the designs. Someone mentioned in the comments in my last video to do a Duskull run, and I thought this would be a great one to do, as I actually had a Duskull in my EG Slash run, and it made the Honedge line look amazing, but when it evolved, not so much. So that is why this isn't a Nuzlocke, because I'm allowing myself to only use Duskull fusions. That means I can't evolve Duskull into Dusclops. Dusclops fusions look 10 times better than Dust Noir or Dusclops fusions, so that's why I'm doing this. Just compare these two for a second. I mean, Duskull is superior in every way. This will also allow me to just choose which Pokemon I want to fuse with Duskull, instead of being forced to catch someone on Route 1, 2, 3, and so on and so on. So if you see a fusion in this video you think is cool, go ahead and give the channel a sub and a like, and I'll make sure to do more videos just like this. But anyways, just like our EG Slash run, I bred a whole bunch of Duskulls in my other save and created a new game plus, which will allow us to use them in our brand new save file. This is randomized, so our starter Pokemon is a complete mystery. Let's take a look. Oh god, not again. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. If you know, you know. Okay. Not too bad, but there's a winner if I ever saw one. Now you might be thinking, wow, Gibble is a great starter, and while yes, that's true, since we won't be evolving the Duskull part of the fusions, most of our team will be at a 450 base stat total or below. More than likely below. Another thing is I'll only be able to use fusions that are dope as fuck, and not those lame fusions that just don't look right. I also won't be using potions in battle. So with our Gibble, I continue on to Route 2. I searched a bit until I found a Squirtle. Something about a dead turtle really piqued my curiosity, so here it is. Dooble is adorable. Get it? Dooble? Adorable? I thought it was pretty good myself. I actually ended up running into a Larvitar, and I just couldn't pass this up. Aww. I just want to give him the most amount of love I can. Now the good thing about having Gibble as our starter is we can get Dragon Rage. Shelto looks like he's on his way to his first day of preschool, and I'm here for it. I am using custom sprites, so we will be seeing some cute little fuzzballs like Woonat. Needless to say, Dooble took out Brock's water types with ease. Fire! Oh god. Nah bro, you can have that battle. That thing made me forfeit the match. I was actually just thinking about Houndor, so I'm glad it popped up in the next route. He has a skull as a Hound Doom, so I'm pretty curious on this one. They're more or less all the same right now, but man, they look so good. He looks more happy now dead than alive. The good news about keeping Duskull as a Duskull is we get to choose Levitate as our ability, and for a fire type like Hound Dower, this is perfect. Now for some reason Rock gave me Rock Smash, but I don't actually have the TM in my bag and I'm pretty much stuck here. So now I have to restart this challenge. I've tried everything and I just don't know what to do. Well, at least we weren't too far along. So I restarted, chose Curlia this time around as my starter since the other two were just bad. But yeah, the new team was looking pretty decent. Of course, they all do kind of look the same, but in their own unique ways. I'm sure the more we evolve them, the more unique they're gonna get. Chimchar is a little different. I love that Doomite changes the magnets for bones. And our first fully evolved Pokemon looks great. This dead bee looks, well, deadly. So let's try it out on Brock again. The white on Raltar makes it look shiny. Ralt's fusions are always adorable. Brock was a psychic type trainer, so our Astonish made easy work of him. I just realized my Chimchar's name is Duchar, which in Spanish would be pronounced Duchar, which actually means shower. Such a good boy shower. Okay, this time around Brock wasn't petty and now we can continue finding more cool Duskull fusions. Oh god, I think I just went blind. It's crazy how good these two complement each other. It's like they were meant to be fused. Blue did give me a run for my money though, as Doomite isn't very physically heavy, so Shadow Sneak wasn't doing very much. I ended up sacking and Doodra also couldn't finish Litmite out with a Shadow Sneak. On top of that, he potioned and then he flame bodied us, which eventually led to Doodrill's death, even though they're all technically already dead. Dulia finally cleaned up his first Pokemon, and then Gold Drio came out. Needless to say, I wiped right there to him. That though Drio does not play games. I was curious to see what Machop would look like, and it did not disappoint. Those chains are off the chain. <laughs> uh, subscribe. With my newly chained up friend, I took Litmine out in two shots as Gold Drio stared down into my soul. We did a lot of damage with the little guy and eventually took one for the team as Doomite was now alive to one shot with Spark from where it was at. Nothing else really posed a threat. Now, give me my lunch bunny back, nerd. Huh, what are the odds Misty is a rock type trainer? She starts off with a Bonrill, but I don't think it'll be a problem for Doochop. Oh wait, 
It's a fairy type. Well, that didn't go as expected. While well, at least Duferno cleans up and Shroomdose shouldn't pose a threat, but can we get a round of applause for this Kranidos and Shroomish fusion? It's phenomenal. I'm so sorry I have to kill you. I did find a Bagon in the other route, and I love that his slicked back hair is now wavy. And I swear, if I get a comment, well, what do you mean? That's not his hair. I, I don't care. It, it looks like hair. I figure Salamence is going to be a monstrous fusion, so I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. I don't know why, but I found a Krabby, and I just thought of the possibility of a dead crab. Oh yeah definitely did not disappoint. Doobie is on the team for sure. Yep, I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep at night after seeing this one. Honestly, the steel typing for Lieutenant Surge kind of fits, and making him have a nice companion like a doggo fits even more. Doolift did pack a punch with Shadow Sneak, but after our Brick Break, all we need to do is Mock Punch for the KO. From there, Magnadial is on the field. Those eyes look like Simpson eyes. A Brick Break almost KO'd as he missed an Ice Fang. After his potion, two Mock Punches finishes that off. It looked kind of shiny fusing with Magnemite. Now we haven't seen anything crazy so far until his ace. Dear Lord, someone tell me what this is referencing. This is amazing. I'm sure Duferno is shaking in his fur. Our flame wheel didn't even do that much and a single iron head completely destroyed us. I did bring Doobie with us, but this thing has knockoff, which is super effective against my entire team. I did shadow sync to pop his berry, but Doobie died immediately after. On top of that, he rock slides, which flinched us. Man, that was an ace if I've ever seen one. But I also was underleveled, so let's try this again. This time around, he has an annex, which looks like a mega orthworm. One single brick break destroys that, and we got something that looks like it's from Yu-Gi-Oh. It did manage to get a hit off, but ultimately, that was a piece of cake as well. But time for the true test. What will you have? Oh, man, I believe that's an Umbreon. A four times weakness to fighting types. Don't mind if I do. And the berry popping is perfect as it won't make him use a potion. You should have stuck with your first team, Lieutenant Surge. Oh, hey, this hiker has a Duskull fusion of his own. And I gotta say, I love the sharpened underbite. Okay, I'll give it to them. This fusion is pretty clever. I did find a Sneasel in Rock Tunnel, and I feel like this is gonna be good. Huh, that's a little more unique. I just realized I haven't gone to this guy for some jokes. All right, what do you call a tentacle on a Charmander's back? Fried calamari. Oh my god, wait, that one's actually pretty good. Still no tip though. I'm not gonna use unknown since it'll be super weak, but I did want to see what it was. All right, that's pretty neat. Oh, well, aren't you happy, dueler? Oh, looks like Curly is evolving too. Holy crap, that's amazing. I didn't expect that dead Ralts to show up. My man Ralts doesn't even fit on the screen. Also, Parawak? Why does this fusion go so hard? I didn't really expect much from Shogun, but it gave me more than what I thought it would, so yeah. Our first battle with Giovanni starts off with a Regis. That's hilariously tiny. So much for being colossal, huh, Regigigas? The fuck you say to me, you little Dugong wasn't really making any progress, so I went into Duferno instead. This thing isn't grass type though, so our flame wheel did absolutely nothing. I mean, this thing is a wall, and it had moonlight. Duferno did end up biting the dust, so I'm hoping Duvoir can put in some work. I gotta call Mind up as he moonlighted. Assuming it was poison type, two psychics were enough to KO after a second call Mind. Needle Free was up next, but she whirlwinded us into Duton. Bad idea considering I have Spark. Okay, okay, throwing some light jabs showing us this Dust Noir and Jinx fusion. Trust me, I'm sure the Dust Goal has a better one. I'm kind of surprised Shadow Sneak did so much, but then I remembered, oh, it's probably quite effective. Maybe next time, Giovanni. Now, I do think Kabuto will eventually replace Kingler since it's just gotta be a better fusion. However, I did catch Vigoroth, which should be good as we can get rid of that Truant ability and give it Levitate instead. I ended up finding a Clink, and I figure the Magneton line will probably not change as much from the Bones as the Magnets. So, I'm gonna be replacing him. This looks like it has promise. Now, Erica is a bug type specialist this time, so I did catch a Rapidash, as Monferno isn't actually a fire type. Holy moly, blue flames is what I'm talking about. So simple, yet so effective. I'm curious to see what Erica, oh man, that looks pretty majestic. Luckily, its moveset did suck and its flame body didn't affect us and right after came Ariados. It almost kept Ariados' name there. It looks like Erica was watching me take out her gym trainers with Doodash because she was very prepared. And Assurance completely demolished our Doodash. I did burn with Duferno just in case and two brick breaks after that took it out. This kind of reminds me of Eggman because of the colors. Hoping it was a steel type, I went for Flame Wheel and it indeed was. Three of those suckers got us the fourth gym badge. Not a bad team, but certainly not too exciting. At least Duferno evolved from that. Wow, this is amazing and tribal. He looks pissed. Duking wasn't super amazing in design, but the main reason I wanted it was for yes, it's typing, but mainly for its base stat total. See, Duskull's base stat total really brings the team down, but this thing will at least bring us up to almost a 500 base stat total. 
who comes up with this stuff? Fuchsia City's Koga is up next, and it looks like grass types are his choice. Huh, two middle stages fuse together. I like it. Too bad Doodash doesn't. Huh, what a pathetic little Pokemon. Uh-oh. Jeez, that packed a punch. What the hell is even that? Oh god, that's disgusting, Koga. Get out of here. As always, the ace is usually a pretty dope design, Tangrowth and Jinx. I would definitely not want to mess with that. And this thing also packed a punch with Giga Drain. It surprised me, but of course, Dunape had no issues. I did say I was going to use Kabutops eventually, so here it is in all its glory. I don't know what's going on here, but I can't really complain. Alright, never mind. Screw Kabutops. Marowak is way cooler than him. I just knew this would be good. Ah yes, the Pokemon spoken in legends and myths. Behold. Dikia. Isn't he just so divine? Wait, what Pokemon are fused to make this? Another fight with Blue arises, and this time he has an Umpler. If it's well. Although Dewak couldn't do anything, so I just let him go down, and Dunape came in for the one shot with close combat. Following this was Charchan, which I just needed on my team. Hoping it wasn't a fire type, I went for a Moonblast after taking a big fire punch, but yeah, it was totally a fire type. Blue was proving to be pretty tough, but if there's anyone who can take on anything, it's Du King. It did have Dragon Rage doing a lot, but Duke King was able to out damage it with Chip Away and a nice Shadow Sneak. Arca Grove kind of creeps me out. It looks like something from the capital, and I'm not messing with it. Praying I live whatever it throws at us, I slack off and we do that two times. I did end up sacking though, as it had Giga Drain, and it was doing a ton of damage. Doodash was able to do some chip, but ultimately this tank just walled everybody on my team. I'm starting to think Duang here isn't as useful as I thought he'd be. Second time around, I actually ended up losing Dunape, but Duking did come through. That is, until Charge Hand burned us. Well, there goes another one. Duwak did do some damage to Arca Growth and lowered its speed with Rock Tomb, but it was only a matter of time before that Giga Drain was shown. Good job, pal. Duvar was this thing's downfall, as we ended up getting a special defense drop on our first Shadow Ball, and from there, the rest is history. Thanks to it not using Giga Drain. Ekfable came out next, so I started wishing and setting up. The only bad thing was Mud Bomb lowered our accuracy, and this wasn't a problem until Cedrio set up a Sword Stance, and we missed the Moon Blast. Alright, Blue literally just kept setting up Swords Dances, so I guess he just gave up. I get it, I get it, you wanted me to have the win. But I promise next time, I'll have a Legendary on my team. I'm not gonna have a Legendary on my team. Giovanni wasn't too hard, but he did have the Tentastar, which just looks like if Star had a Mega. You know, with all the tech you guys have in this building, you'd think you invest in some decent security so that literal 10-year-olds don't have to risk their lives fighting an evil organization like Team Rocket. But no, I can't get a day off. Yes, my, my apologies, sir. You're damn right it is. That's a sick Ash and Allure. Some of these fusions are just absolutely great. I think this is Rotom, but I'm not sure. Now there's a good chance Sabrina will be difficult as she is a ghost type trainer. Most of these gym leaders are the typing that is super effective or not super effective for their original type. Crazy how that worked out for this run. She starts off with this, which I really hope I don't see in my sleep tonight. And it was kind of annoying as it had Intimidate, so our Shadow Sneak from Duke King didn't do quite half. Also, it used Curse and I just kind of forgot about her potions. I did end up switching into Duvar. With her using Curse again, Duvar was able to KO, but then Miss Maraid came out. Now this is a great fusion. I am Cursed, so I did throw in Dunape on an Astonish. Now I should have just Shadow Sneak twice, but I used Flame Wheel instead. One, because I keep forgetting I'm not a Fire type, and I thought this would be a Grass type. So Dunape didn't actually end up getting any Spotlight here. I send in Duwak, and I would Stomping Tantrum, but I don't know if this thing has Levitate. But I mean, Shadow Sneak was doing a lot. If only I had a Thick Club. Once that was done, Gangon was on the field. And Duwak was able to weaken it down to half, but he did have to take one for the team. Now Duvar can take a Zen Headbutt, which almost took her out, and retaliate with a Moonblast. Shanda Flame scared me, as I only have two Pokemon left. Of course, we can't outspeed, so we do go down, and Duking is our only hope. Thankfully, I do have Shadow Sneak, so two of those, since she can't do much to us, and that's the battle. Thank God for Duking. I love how we're seeing a bunch of Duskull fusions in this run, just by fighting random trainers. And I also love those bony wings on Charizard. I caught an Aeron in Seafoam Island, so I had high hopes for this thing. Alright, it's not too bad. A little generic, but better than Clang. Holy shit, is this a reference to something? That is way too good to not be a reference. Now Blaine actually has Electro-type Pokemon, which is great for us since I managed to snag a Thick Club off of Cubone for Dewak. I had to go through a whole pack of them and an Angry Mother to get that thing. But anyways, this Reggie Orb wasn't a problem thanks to that, and what the actual fuck is this? It did bulk up, which made Stomping Tantrum not KO, and then he just healed and eventually switched, which was dumb because his Jolt Lee just got obliterated on the switch in. Back out came Raichamp, and I figured he was out of potion, so a Shadow Sneak finished that off. 
Next up was Jolto, so now the game was really testing me. I figured it did have Levitate, but I tried it anyways, and man did he do a number on us. Oh, and yes, it did have it. A Shadow Snake did a lot though, so that's the Thick Club doing its work. Duking is pretty much as strong as Duwax, so I just Shadow Snake twice, and that was the battle. Blaine, it was a great team, but with a Thick Club on Marowak, you stood no chance. Since now we are level 50, we can now take Salamence and see exactly what it turns into. Wow, that thing looks sick! Sorry, Agron, he's just a tad bit better. Although I will use you for the most unfair fight in this game. Not unfair for me, Giovanni. Unfair for you. Dugron, use Rock Slide! Well, uh, at least we got some damage off. Now it's time for Duwak, which may or may not go well thanks to Articuno. Oh, come on! Duking almost KO'd Articuno with Chip Away, but that thing lives, meaning Duking also has to take one for the team. Probably should have saved Duwak until Articuno was dead, but oh well. Now our Intimidate isn't going to do much, but at least Shadow Sneak will take out Articuno. Safe to say we have to try this again. Duskull is just the weak link of the fusions. We can't take any hits. So I guess this fight is still pretty much unfair to me. This actually took like a couple of attempts. I mean, my Pokemon were just dropping like flies. So let's just cut to the part where I did win. All right, buddy, this time you're going down. All right, so Articuno is our main problem here. So Duardos is out first to get a Rock Tomb off. This lowers Articuno's speed and drops it all the way to half, while Moltres gets us even more weak with an Ancient Power. I could just Shadow Sneak, but instead I risk Quick Claw activating. It in fact does not, and Duardos is out for the rest of the fight. Now Dugron can come in, and after taking two Ancient Powers, our Rock Slide does connect, just not on the stinking Articuno. Are you serious? It literally only hit Moltres. You're totally off the team after this. Knowing I can't outspeed, I Shadow Sneak for some chip. I know a chip away will kill Articuno, but I didn't think I'd be fast enough than the other two. I managed to get another one off on Moltres before getting taken out. Praying a Shadow Sneak takes out Moltres, I send out Dumens. Yeah, of, of course it didn't, but either way, Duvar can get the revenge kill. All that's left is this electric headpiece. My Moonblast didn't do jack, so the following turn, on the off chance we live, I used Wish. Oh my god, we lived on literal 1 HP. But I'm realizing this was stupid as Wish won't activate since Duwak is completely healthy. Whoops. Thankfully Z used Charge and now we can start Rock Tombing and yeah, it never attacked us so Duwak comes out victorious. I can just imagine him poking that Zapdos' head with his little stick. That took a lot of tries but it totally makes sense as again, Duskull's stats are utter garbage. You can't really give yourself the title of Greatest Trainer alive when you're rocking a team of only normal types, Giovanni. I'll be honest though, I have no idea what this is. I'm guessing Ditto and Arceus, but I, I could be wrong. Turn 1 Close Combat didn't KO, but he actually used Earth Power, which we're immune to. Knowing a potion was coming, another Close Combat does the job. Ableon did Sucker Punch us, nearly KOing, which caught me completely off guard, but of course, it as well couldn't live a Close Combat. This thing wasn't really attacking us, so I did manage to do a lot of chip until its future sight did end up taking us out. Duardos eventually took it out and eventually tits came out. I'm assuming this is Gengar and the fact that it has no face and just biddies is really weirding me out. This game is cursed. It was indeed a ghost type which I guess I should have looked up and now Duardos was dead to two dark pulses. The good news is I do have crunch on Dumens. The bad news is he flinched us on his first one and crit on his second. What the hell is that RNG? Yeah, this thing swept me and it doesn't even have a face. Well, I guess he really is the best trainer alive. Second time around, Bliscargo gets pummeled by a close combat, and so does Porias. I read that so wrong. <laughs> Gargon Z did end us though, and Duardos couldn't finish it off if his revived life depended on it. Oh wait, it does. Come on, man. We did manage to waste all of his potions, and Giovanni was just using Lock On, which was useless. Not because the move itself is useless, but because he literally switched into Porichu to die. His coolest mon got 2 seconds of screen time, and then he goes back into Gargon Z only to switch out again before dying. Is that Kirby? And on top of all that, it looks like Kirby was going through some rough times. Alright, alright, you went easy on me that time, but don't tell my subscribers, okay? It's kind of embarrassing. Why does it look like Mold Ninja is farting out fire? Hypno art makes me have an appreciation for Hypno. And honestly, a Pukumuku run might have to become a reality. Smash, no question. I present to you all, a fusion that could actually make you like Meganium. Didn't think it was possible. I like Meganium, but I know a bunch of you don't like Meganium. But enough fusions, I'm sure we'll see a ton of them in the Elite Four. This is my final team for the League, and I knew this would be an interesting challenge to do. Even without being a Nuzlocke, it was pretty difficult, but I mean, just looking at these guys, I knew it was all worth it. Lorelai is up first, and she has a Blastron. This Blastoise looks premature. Out you go, buddy. It looks like she's a Water-type trainer, but of course her Magong had to have Ice Beam to ruin another one-hit KO with Dewak. 
I wish I had Earthquake, but unfortunately that glitch happened again where the TM just disappeared when I received it. I couldn't do much with Duking since I did misclick Will-O-Wisp, which obviously won't work against this thing, and Dunape also bit the dust here as well. Finally, we got lucky that she healed again and a Rock Tomb from Duardos did a lot as well as lowering its speed. Of course, even with the speed drop, it didn't let us outspeed and we were able to KO with another Rock Tomb. Octopert is totally high on something and I need what he's smoking. We go down to a big Hydro Pump, which is fine, and Dumance comes out. It went for Bullet Seed, which was great as Dragon Claw was chipping away, but even though Hydro Pump was also resisted, this thing packed a punch, nearly killing Mence. I did get a sneaky Shadow Sneak off for some chip, and Duvar was our only Pokemon left for the first battle. Our Moon Blast couldn't even KO him. Come on, Duvar. Since it was using Bullet Seed, I did wish away, just praying it would keep using it. Eventually, we did outspeed and Moonblast KO'd, as well as the Wish healing us to full for Gear Elosion. Wow. I did manage to get a debuff on her special attack, which mattered as we ended up living enough flamethrowers to wish away and Calm Mind as we were seconds away from dying. She then proceeded to miss a big hurricane, so I wished again and Calm Minded some more. Eventually, Duvar did come out on top for the battle, and I can't believe it. Alright Duvar, I'm not talking shit about you anymore. That was a clutch and a half. Bruno actually kept his fighting type roots, which was nice to see. He wasn't too difficult, but he did have some cool Pokemon. Lycross was definitely my favorite, but honorable mention to this big old pup. Wait, Agatha is also a fighting type master. Does this mean she's hanging out with Bruno? Well Bruno, I didn't think you had a thing for older women, but to each their own. This thing wasn't crazy either, but EG Champ makes me wish I used one in my EG run. In fact, I think someone commented this. Whoa, Steel Ikken is crazy good. The crystals replacing his hair is genius. Lance was a fairy type expert, which was pretty fitting. Lance was a walk in the park and he didn't have too much for fusions. Dunape actually swept through most of them and he's weak to fairy. Honestly, the last three Elite Four members were a total letdown and Lorelei almost ended our first attempt of the league, so I'm pretty conflicted. You better give me a good fight, Blue. Okay, okay, I lied. We can go back to how it was before. Rampa 2? Duwak thankfully lived a big head smash at 4 HP, and I just knew a stomping tantrum was going to KO, especially after that recoil, but that thing could have been super scary with Rampardo's attack stat. And, well, it's Mewtwo. Nine Dash literally just looks like a more elegant Ninetales. Duwak's time has come to an end right there. Duardos did a lot with Rock Tomb after taking a huge Flare Blitz, but the following turn, Blue switched into Mega Eon. We do lower its speed, but I doubt I can outspeed for an Iron Head. Oh, we used the Potion, nice. And right when our Quick Claw popped to almost KO it, Chandrio came in. Thankfully, a Drill Pick didn't KO Duardos, as I knew Rock Tomb was going to destroy this three-headed Chandelier. Okay, maybe not, but it was close. I did think he was out of potions, but I guess I was wrong and Shadow Sneak. I don't think I'm faster even with the speed drop, but it looks like it didn't matter as our Quick Claw proc. Oh well, Duardos fought super hard. I knew he was better than Agron. He still had one more potion, so he popped it, and three Shadow Sneaks later from Dumens, that thing was down. I was really hoping a Shadow Sneak would KO 9 Dash, but it just didn't, and there goes Duskull's stats showing up once again. Duking was able to revenge kill, and I totally forgot about Siege Rio. I was able to Will O Wisp, but unfortunately, Duking will go down here. I ended up getting a big crit on Duelvoir, and of course, our Moonblast didn't do anything. With that burn, we were able to live a move, and after I lived our move, it did die to the burn, but with only Dunape left, our hope of winning this on the first try is pretty slim. Wait, we outspeed Mega Eon! No, it didn't kill Safeguard. Oh, don't get cocky on me now, Blue. No, we totally lost this, man. I did look it up and this thing is water grass, but even with that and acrobatics didn't even do half. Wait, it stockpiled. What? Wait, is he going to swallow? You idiot, why would you swallow? Swallowing is for losers. Wait, oh my God, I can't believe we won the league. On our first attempt with Duskull's base stat total, I was sure this was gonna take me so many attempts. Blue, you sold so hard. I love how every one of our fusions is trying to evolve into Dust Noir at the end. Like, no, we did this as Duskulls and we're going to stay like Duskulls. Man, this team sure did a lot for us. I have no idea who was my favorite. Honestly, Rampardos and Duwak really stuck out to me and they look so cool. Let me know which one was your favorite out of the whole run and please, if any of you have suggestions for this game, let me know that as well. But yeah, thank god I don't have to spend who knows how many more hours trying to defeat the game with Duskull's stats. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time. Bye!